Birth is the most natural thing in the world, but not every species gives birth in the same way. These are some of the most unique births in the animal kingdom. This is what these 20 animals look like while giving birth. Number 20. Elephants Give Birth Elephants have the longest gestation period of any mammals, lasting 22 months, but they give birth to live young. Twins are uncommon. Virtually all pregnancies result in a single birth. When it's time to give birth, female elephants leave the herd and return to present the new family member who is inspected by all the other elephants in the herd. Babies generally weigh 90 to 120 kilograms at birth and stand approximately 3 feet tall. Elephant babies are typically hairy with a long tail and a short trunk that grows as the elephant's food changes. At the age of 2, offspring are weaned. However, some may nurse until they are six and a half years old. Estrus cycles are four to six years apart because of the extended gestation and breastfeeding time. In her lifespan, a female elephant will have seven kids on average. Elephant intercourse may take up to two minutes. Pretty impressive, hey guys? And he will linger near the female afterward to protect her from rival males. During each estrus cycle, which may last up to 18 weeks, females can mate with many bulls. While elephants do not marry for life, a female may choose to mate with the same bull many times, and bulls are known to be protective of females. Until the age of 8, the kids are cared for by the mother and other female family members, and females occasionally nurse babies who are not their own. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. Let's take a moment to discuss how cows give birth. Because to be blunt, it's bonkers. Cows give birth to their calves head first. While that bit is normal for a lot of mammals, the crazy thing is they give birth while standing up. Now that's some serious business. This is how this animal looks while giving birth, standing up. As always, comment down below with the hashtag juicy topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Number 19. Male Seahorses Give Birth any of the 46 species of tiny marine fish in the genus Hippocampus is better known as a seahorse. Seahorses may court for many days before breeding. The courting activity, according to scientists, synchronizes the animal's movements and reproductive stages, allowing the male to collect the eggs when the female is ready to deposit them. They may change color, swim side by side, gripping tails, or grab the same strand of seagrass with their tails, and perform a pre-dawn dance in which they circle around in sync. They ultimately perform an eight-hour true courtship dance in which the male pumps water through the egg sac on his trunk, which swells and opens up to reveal its emptiness. When the female's eggs reach maturation, she and her partner let go of any moorings and glide upward, snout to snout, out of the seagrass, frequently swirling. They have a six-minute interaction that is evocative of courting. The female then swims away till the next morning, leaving the male to eat via his nose, the female seahorse lays her eggs into the male's pouch after the male and female have spent time courting. After that, the male fertilizes the eggs in the pouch. Seahorse fathers carry their kids in a pouch rather than a uterus like human mothers do. Their pouch supplies oxygen and nutrition to the developing eggs, while also regulating temperature, blood flow, and salinity. Male seahorses generally carry their eggs for two to four weeks depending on the species. Then, one by one, they give birth to 100 to 1,000 babies. That's a lot of cute little seahorses. Seahorse fathers, like human mothers, give birth to their offspring through energetically demanding muscular contractions. Number 18. African cichlids give birth from their mouth. 
Pit spawning, also known as substrate breeding, is a cichlid activity in which a fish digs a pit in the sand or ground in which a pair of fish court and spawn. Pit spawning is influenced by a number of parameters including the female's choice of male and pit size, as well as the male's defense of the pits once excavated in the sand. Mouth brooders and substrate brooders are the two major families of cichlids. Each form of reproduction is connected with different amounts of paternal investment and behavior. Because pit spawning is a reproductive behavior, several physiological changes in the cichlid occur throughout the process, interfering with social engagement. Because of this behavioral experience, many distinct species pit spawn, and many different morphological modifications ensue. Pit spawning is a cichlid habit that has developed through time. Phylogenetic data from cichlids in Lake Tanganyika might help researchers figure out how their reproductive habits evolved. Pit spawning is linked to a number of critical activities including paternal care, food providing, and brood guarding. Pit spawning cichlid eggs are often smaller than those laid by mouth brooders. Pit spawners' eggs are typically 2 mm in diameter, whereas mouth brooders' eggs are normally 7 mm in diameter. While mouth brooders and pit spawners have different postnatal habits, there are some commonalities. Both mouth brooders and pit spawning cichlids have females that look after their young after they hatch. Both Parents may show concern in some circumstances, but the female is always concerned about the eggs and freshly hatched offspring. Number 17. Spotted Hyenas Have a Painful and Risky Birthing Process the spotted hyena is a sub-Saharan African animal that is also known as the laughing hyena. The IUCN considers it to be of least concern because of its vast range and huge population of between 27,000 and 47,000 individuals. The spotted hyena, like many feliform animals, is promiscuous and does not develop long-term pair relationships. Over the course of several years, members of both sexes may copulate with multiple mates. Even if the male outweighs his partner, men will approach females in heat in a subservient manner. Females typically prefer younger guys who were born after them or who were adopted into the tribe after they were born. Older women have a similar tendency, but they also prefer guys with whom they have already had lengthy and amicable relationships. Female hyenas have three times the amount of testosterone as males, resulting in an unusual and dangerous labor process. Hyenas give birth via their clitoris Taurus, which is also known as a pseudopenis. Ouch. Because a hyena's birth canal is tiny, around one inch broad, many hyena infants do not survive. Suffocation among the cubs is common, as is the mortality of first-time hyena moms. Squirrel monkeys, lemurs, fossas, a carnivorous mammal with a cat-like face and a bear-like body, and binturongs, mammals with a cat-like face and a bear-like body, all have pseudopenises. Number 16. Kangaroo Gives Birth the kangaroo belongs to the Macropodidae family of marsupials. Australia and New Guinea are home to kangaroos. According to the Australian government, 42.8 million kangaroos lived in Australia's commercial harvest regions in 2019, down from 53.2 million in 2013. Mobs, courts, and troops are kangaroo groups that generally contain 10 or more kangaroos in them. Kangaroos have consort pairs for sexual activities. A male will keep an eye on a girl and track her every move. The guy will then approach her gently so as not to startle her. The male will go on to another female when copulation is completed. Consort coupling can take many days, and copulation can take a long time as well. As a result, a consort couple is more likely to be seen by a competing male. A baby kangaroo, unlike most other animals young, is extremely undeveloped and embryo-like upon birth. The jelly bean-sized newborn kangaroo makes the trip from birth birth canal to pouch by clambering up through its mother's fur after a gestation period of up to 34 days. The joey suckles for slightly over two months, once securely within the pouch. When the young kangaroo is approximately six months old, it will leave the pouch for brief periods of time, returning only when it needs to eat. Number 15. Suriname Toads Give Birth Out of Their Backs the common Suriname toad, also known as the star-fingered toad, is a frog species found in Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, French Guiana, Guyana, Peru, 
Suriname, Trinidad, and Tobago, and Venezuela, belonging to the Pipidae family. Subtropical or tropical wet lowland forests, swamps, freshwater marshes, and intermittent freshwater marshes are its native habitats. Habitat loss poses a hazard to it. The reproduction behaviors of the Suriname toads are well known. Unlike the majority of toads, this species' males do not use croaks or other noises associated with water creatures to attract mates. Instead, by breaking the hyoid bone in their necks, they make a loud clicking sound while still in amplexus. The partners ascend from the floor and arc through the water. The female releases 3 to 10 eggs during each arc, which the male's motions embed in the skin on her back. The eggs sink into the skin after implantation and develop pockets over many days, like an uneven honeycomb. Inside these pockets, the embryos develop into tadpoles, finally emerging as fully-fledged toads from the mother's back, despite being less than an inch long. 25 millimeters. Toads begin a mostly lonely life after emerging from their mother's back. After giving birth to the baby toads, the mother gradually sheds the small patch of skin she used to give birth to them, allowing the cycle to begin again. Number 14. Giraffes give birth standing up. Giraffes have a 400 to 460 day gestation period, following which they usually give birth to a single calf. However, twins do occur on rare instances. Standing up, the woman gives delivery. The calf breaks through the fetal membranes with its head and front legs first, then falls to the earth, cutting the umbilical cord. A baby giraffe stands between 1.7 and 2 meters tall. The calf can gallop around and is nearly indistinguishable from a one week old within a few hours of birth. However, it spends the first one to three weeks of its life hidden, thanks to its camouflage coat pattern. Within a few days, the ossicones, which had been flat while in the womb, stand straight up. Mothers and their calves will form nursery herds and move or browse together. Mothers in a group like these may leave their young with one female while foraging and drinking elsewhere. This is referred to as a calving pool. Although they appear to have amicable relations, adult males have practically zero part in rearing the young. Calves are vulnerable to predators, therefore a mother giraffe will stand over her calf and kick at a predator approaching. If a disturbance is detected by females observing calving pools, they will only notify their own young, but others will notice and follow. Calves can be weaned between the ages of 6 and 8 months, although they can stay with their moms for up to 14 months. Number 13. Tasmanian Devils the Tasmanian Devil belongs to the Dasyuridae family of carnivorous marsupials. It was formerly exclusively found on the island of Tasmania, but a tiny breeding population has been reintroduced to New South Wales on mainland Australia. Following the demise of the thylacine in 1936, the Tasmanian Devil, the size of a small dog, became the world's biggest carnivorous marsupial. It has a quoll-like appearance and is distantly related to the thylacine. Its stocky and muscular physique, black hair, strong odor, incredibly loud and frightening shriek, excellent sense of smell and fury when eating are all characteristics. Because of its enormous head and neck, the Tasmanian Devil can deliver some of the most powerful bites per unit body mass of any living predatory terrestrial animal. It hunts for prey and eats carrion. When females attain sexual maturity, usually in their second year, they begin to reproduce. They become fertile once a year at this time, generating new numerous ova while in heat. Devils give birth to 20 to 30 young standing up, each measuring around 0.18 to 0.24 grams after a 21-day gestation period. Number 12. The platypus is one of few mammals that lays eggs. The platypus, endemic to Australia, is a duck-billed, beaver-tailed, otter-footed, egg-laying water creature. If its beauty isn't enough to entice you, this species male is among the planet's rare venomous mammals. The male platypus, which has stinging claws on the heels of its hind feet, can deliver a powerful poisoned strike to any approaching rival. The platypus, which can only be found in Australia, is one of five mammalian species that lays eggs rather than giving birth to live offspring. 
spring. Four echidna species are among the other egg-laying animals scientists now believe that the strange egg-laying animals that still exist today did so because their forebearers took to the sea. The monotremes, which include the platypus and spiny anteaters, are unusual cousins of the rest of the mammals that carry live offspring. Aside from producing eggs, they have additional characteristics that make them look more like reptiles than humans. They walk like reptiles with legs on the sides rather than below the body, and just one duct for urine, excrement, and sex rather than many entrances. These head scratchers are sometimes referred to as primitive living fossils that provide insight into our distant ancestors' appearance. Number 11. Stingray Stingrays are a type of sea ray that is linked to sharks and is a cartilaginous fish. Stingrays may be found in tropical and subtropical coastal seas all around the world. When a male is wooing a female, he carefully follows her and bites her pectoral disc. One of his two claspers is then inserted into her valve. Stingrays are ovoviviparous, which means they give birth to live young in groups of 5 to 13. The female's behavior shifts during this time to help her future progeny. Without a placenta, females carry their embryos in the womb. Instead, the embryos consume nourishment from a yolk sac, which is depleted by the mother's uterine milk. After being born with the innate abilities to guard and feed themselves, the children typically disassociate from the mother and swim away. Two female stingrays gave birth to seven young stingrays at the Sea Life London Aquarium, despite the fact that the moms had not seen a male in two years. This implies that some ray species can store sperm and then give birth when the conditions are right. Number 10. Bat Bats belong to the Chiroptera order of animals. They are the only animals capable of genuine and sustained flight because their forelimbs have been developed as wings. Bats fly with their very long spread out fingers coated by a thin membrane called patagium, making them more agile than most birds. Kitty's hog-nosed bat, which is 29 to 34 millimeters long, is the smallest bat and possibly the smallest extant animal. The flying foxes are the biggest bats with the enormous golden crowned flying fox, Acerodon jubitus, weighing up to 1.6 kilograms. Bats are the second biggest mammal order after rodents, accounting for around 20% of all recognized mammal species worldwide. with over 1,400 species. Males of most bat species mate with many females, making them polygynous. Male pipistrelle, noctule, and vampire bats may claim and protect female-attracting resources, such as roost places, and mate with them. Males that are unable to claim a site are forced to dwell on the outskirts, where they have a lower chance of reproducing. Female bats employ a number of tactics to manage the timing of pregnancy and the birth of their young, in order to align delivery with maximum food availability and other environmental conditions. Some species females have delayed fertilization, which means sperm is retained in the reproductive canal for months after mating. Number 9. Porcupine it's true, porcupets, or baby porcupines, are born with quills on their bodies. Those quills, on the other hand, are soft, wet, and flexible, and drying them out and making them spiky takes approximately an hour. Furthermore, the infant is completely encased in a tiny placental sac, which breaks open as soon as the baby enters the world. This sac, according to some naturalists, may make the childbirth process a little simpler. It is the size of the infant, not the quills, that would make mom uncomfortable. Porcupines have just one baby every year, which weighs around one pound at birth. Adult females weigh around 15 pounds, so giving birth to a 9-pound kid would be like a 140-pound woman giving birth to a 90-pound baby. You might be wondering why porcupines only produce one enormous child, when other rodents, the porcupine is the world's third largest rodent behind the beaver and capybara, spread out their reproductive effort by producing numerous tiny pups in one or more litters each year. According to evolutionary theory, there are two primary reproduction methods. If your kids are likely to be eaten, it's better to have a lot of tiny ones rather than one big one, in the hopes that at least one of them will survive and reproduce. If your infants are less likely to be eaten before they reach adulthood, you're better off concentrating your efforts on a smaller number of well-developed offspring. At birth, being big and well-developed increases one's chance of surviving. Number 8. Horse 
horses are a precocial animal, with foals capable of standing and running as soon as they are born. In most cases, foals are born in the spring. A mare's estuous cycle lasts around 19 to 22 days and lasts from early spring to late fall. During the winter, the majority of mares enter an anstrous phase and do not cycle. Between the ages of four and six months, foals are weaned from their mothers. Horses, especially colts, are occasionally physiologically capable of reproduction at around 18 months, but domesticated horses, especially females, are rarely permitted to mate until the age of three. Horses are considered mature when they reach the age of four. However, the skeleton continues to develop until they reach the age of six. Maturity is also influenced by the horse's size, breed, sex, and quality of care. Larger horses have larger bones, which take longer to develop bone tissue, as well as larger epiphyseal plates, which take longer to convert from cartilage to bone. These plates are essential to development since they convert after the other sections of the bones. Horses are generally sad and trained to be ridden between the ages of two and four, depending on their maturity, breed, and intended work. Although thoroughbred racehorses can be ridden as young as two years old, in some countries, horses bred for sports like dressage are usually not saddled until they are three or four years old, since their bones and muscles have not fully matured. Number seven, Crocodile. Crocodiles lay eggs in a variety of places, including holes and mound nests, depending on the species. A hole nest is generally dug in the sand, whereas mound nest is usually made of plants. The length of the nesting phases varies from a few weeks to six months. Courtship is a lengthy process that involves a succession of behavioral exchanges that include a range of snout stroking and submissive displays. Mating is usually done in the water, and the couple may be seen mating numerous times. Females can construct or dig a number of experimental nests, each of which seems to be unfinished and abandoned later. The egg-laying period is generally 30 to 40 minutes long and takes place at night. Females guard their nests and young with their lives. The eggs have a hard shell, yet they are transparent when they are laid. Seven to 95 eggs are deposited, depending on the crocodile species. Crocodile embryos lack sex chromosomes, and sex is not determined genetically unlike humans. Temperature determines sex, with most hatchlings being females at 30 Celsius or below, and both sexes at 31 degrees Celsius. The young begin calling within the eggs at the moment of hatching. They have an egg tooth formed from the skin at the tip of their snouts that helps them puncture through the shell. When the female hears the cries, she generally excavates the nest and takes the unhatched eggs in her mouth, rolling them slowly to assist the process. In most cases, the young are transported to the water in the mouth. She would then feed and bring her hatchlings to the water. Number six, octopus. When octopuses procreate, the male uses a specialized arm called a hectocotylus to carry spermatophores or packets of sperm from the cephalopod penis into the female's mantle cavity. The hectocotylus is generally the third right arm of the benthic octopuses with a spoon-shaped depression and modified suckers at the tip. Fertilization takes place in the mantle cavity in most animals. Only a few species of octopuses have been investigated in terms of reproduction. The giant Pacific octopus is one such species in which courting is followed by changes in skin texture and color, particularly in the male. The male may cling to the female's top or side, or he may stand beside her. It's possible he'll utilize his hectocotylus first to remove any spermatophore or sperm already existing in the female. With the hectocotylus, he picks up a spermatophore, and his spermatophoric sac inserts it into the female's mantle cavity and places it in the proper position for the species, which in the case of the gigantic Pacific octopus is the oviduct opening. 
This method involves the transmission of two spermatophores, each of which is about one meter long, with the empty end protruding from the female's mantle. The female gigantic Pacific octopus attaches strings of tiny fertilized eggs, around 10,000 to 70,000 total, to rocks in a fissure or beneath an overhang around 40 days after mating. She watches and cares for them for around five months until they hatch, during which time she does not feed and dies shortly after. Males become senescent after mating and die a few weeks later. Number 5. Seal Female pinnipeds, often known as seals, enter estuous shortly after giving birth, with the exception of the walrus, which has a 5-6 to six year inter-birth gap. Delay implantation occurs in all species in which the embryo remains in a state of halted development for weeks or months before being implanted in the uterus. Delayed implantation means the birth of the young is postponed until the mother hauls out on land or the birthing conditions are appropriate. Seals go through a year of gestation, including delayed implantation. The majority of species give birth throughout the spring and summer months. Single puppies are usually born. Twins are unusual and have a high death rate. Precocial pups are born in the majority of animals. Pinniped milk has little to no lactose, unlike that of terrestrial animals. Mother pinnipeds have a variety of maternal care and breastfeeding methods. During their relatively brief breastfeeding period, four days for the hooded seal and five weeks for the elephant seals, phocids such as elephant seals, gray seals, and hooded seals remain on land or ice and fast. The milk of this species contains up to 60% fat, which allows the young to develop rapidly. Number 4. Red Crabs Red crabs may be found in the woods of the Christmas Islands for the most of the year. They do, however, move to the shore every year to reproduce. The start of the rainy season, typically October, November, allows the crabs to ramp up their activity, which promotes their yearly trip. The phases of the moon influence the time of their migration. Red crabs exit their burrows and travel to the coast to mate and spawn during this migration. It generally takes at least a week, and the male crabs usually arrive before the females. Male crabs build tunnels on the beach, which they must defend against other males. Mating takes place in or around burrows. Males return to the forest shortly after mating, but females stay in the burrow for another two weeks. They deposit their eggs and nurture them in their abdominal brood pouch at this time to help them develop. Females exit their burrows and release their eggs into the ocean at the conclusion of the incubation period, precisely at the turn of the high tide during the last quarter of the moon. A female red crab may lay up to 100,000 eggs in her abdominal sac, which she keeps in her abdomen. Females make their way toward the water as the waning moon approaches. Females brace themselves at the water's edge and release their eggs in what appears to be a dance. Number 3. Snake Snakes have a variety of reproductive strategies, but they always require internal fertilization. This is achieved by the use of a paired forked hemipenes that are stored inverted in the male's tail. Hemipenes are grooved, hooked, or spined, and are meant to grasp the female's cloaca walls. Most snake species lay eggs, which they discard shortly after they are laid. However, some species, such as the king cobra, build nests and remain around the hatchlings after the eggs have been laid. The majority of pythons coil around their egg clusters and stay with them until the eggs hatch, except to bask in the sun or sip water, a female python will not leave the eggs. She'll even shiver to produce heat for the eggs incubation. Several snake species, including the boa constrictor and green anaconda, are completely viviparous, feeding their young through both a placenta and a yolk sac. This is uncommon among reptiles and is more commonly seen in requiem sharks or placental mammals. Number 2. Great African Land Snail Massive African land snails are hermaphrodites, which mean they may both be male and female at the same time. Although snails seldom self-fertilize, it is not unheard of, so maintaining a single snail does not mean that you will not have eggs or babies. Snails like Akatina fulica are the simplest to breed and don't require any extra treatment to reproduce. After around six months, snails may start breeding and the bigger of the couple will usually carry the eggs. Egg clutches are generated 
divided in groups ranging from 30 to 1,000 eggs. To give them a greater chance of survival, batches are usually generated many months apart, although we recommend checking for eggs every three days. The eggs are whitish or yellowish in color and have a diameter of 4 to 5 millimeters. Hatching eggs can take anything from a few days to six weeks. If the conditions are favorable, around 90% of the infants should survive. Number 1. Sugar Glider the sugar glider is a nocturnal, omnivorous, arboreal gliding possum that belongs to the marsupial infraclass. Its popular name comes from its love of sweet foods like sap and nectar, as well as its ability to glide through the air like a flying squirrel. In general, sugar gliders may have two litters every year on average, they can have twins much like humans, and the average mother has two to three babies each year. The gestation period within the womb is only 15 to 17 days after a female becomes pregnant. The infant is roughly the size of a grain of rice when it's birthed. The mother will lick a tree of saliva from the uterus to her pouch before giving birth, and the infant will automatically follow it. The infant will latch itself to the nipple once inside the pouch and stay there for the following 8 to 10 weeks. Are you happy with regular human birth or do you want to try one of these methods? Which was your favorite animal on our list? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.